Hello, my creative friends. Welcome back to another art exploration video with Jessica, Kelly, and Lisa. If you're not part of our Facebook group, please feel free to join us. We have a new color challenge every single month of 2020. Well, this is my video. I'm Jessica and I'm excited to be here with you today. So let's talk about dark blue. Our color for September is dark blue, which is sort of like sapphire and I love sapphire. It's my, my birthstone for my birthday month. So it, it's always fun for me to, to play with that. Okay, so I wanted to choose some deep dark blue watercolors and so I got out my Daniel Smith blue palette and I'm pulling out my Indenthrone blue, which is this really rich, deep, dark blue. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Let me just add a little water so you can see what it looks like. A little bit more thinned out, but it creates this just really beautiful. It does, it does lean a little bit toward the warm side, so it's a little bit purpley in there, but it's really, really gorgeous. I love it. So this is a, my favorite, favorite dark blue. You just can't really get much darker than that Indian Throne blue. You really can't, unless it's black, right? All right, so I also wanted to show you, though, ultramarine blue, which is also a nice dark blue when it comes to watercolor. It is quite bright though, especially compared to the Indian Throne. But it is really still a lovely color. It has a nice granulating effect. And then I thought cobalt blue was also a nice dark and bright blue. So really gorgeous dark blues. And you can do a lot with these colors. And they look gorgeous together too. You just create a lovely gradation. Let me just, I'm improvising now. <laughs> yeah, this wasn't part of my original plan, but just to show you what a nice gradation you can get with these three colors. And it's still really bright. So I'll go back to my end of the room and just <laughs> I mean, why not? It's just gorgeous, right? Blue is my favorite color, in case you couldn't tell. And look at this water. It's lovely. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. Let's talk about then the complement of blue, which is orange. So I'm bringing in Mission Gold, bright, dark, quote, dark. It's really bright. As far as value goes, it's fairly dark. If it's lighter, it's going to be the complement of the dark, right? But so let me just add a little water there. So this is Mission Gold Orange. And let's just bring in that and see how they mix and move. Look how <laughs> that flowed straight into the orange. It's really, really bossy. <laughs> That's the Indian Throne. This is the cobalt. And then we have also the ultramarine blue. It's pretty watery there. So it, those colors really push around this mission gold orange, but you can create really interesting grays there with that. Look how that's really, I love this. I love this little section of mixed color here. <laughs> All right. So that's the complement of dark blue would be orange, a bright orange, a light orange would be even more complement because it's contrast of value. Okay. So let's move on to my favorites to use with these colors. So that's ultramarine and Indian Throne. I usually use Indian Throne in a really, really tend to have it really dark. And what colors would I use with this? I would tend to go toward like the purple, uh, pinky colors, purple colors, I think would look cool with this. Greens, neutral kind of greens can look good with that. And let's see, I haven't brought in any of the cobalt. What if I did opera? I don't know if I call that a favorite, 
but maybe because I love how it just will punch up next to this in the room blue. Really pretty. And of course, almost always <laughs> bring in metallics because metallics in general are my favorite. Now, if you went more toward a, a red gold kind of color, this one is the champagne gold. But if you went more toward this red gold kind of metallic, it looks really nice too. So because I use blues a lot, I use it with almost every color. So that's why I have so many faves, right? Okay, so let's move on to a fun and easy painting project. I'm going to go completely abstract today and just have fun playing with this dark, amazing dark blue color. All right, let's get started with that. Okay, I have taped off my page and pressed down this lovely Galaxy washi tape. And I'm just going to start playing. I decided I would use my dagger brush. That's a loose goose from Cheap Joe's if you're interested. Because it's just fun to play with and create some lovely interesting marks. So I'm just going to play, drag that down. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. I want to create some really deep, dark contrast in there. Really want to load up this brush. See how long these bristles are? That's what makes it so fun to play with and gives you such interesting, interesting marks. So going for this deep, dark, saturated, very very deep color blue and up right now I've just used the end and throne now I'm just going to drop some water in here and see if this paint will move a little bit I think that on this particular paper it will and I'm just gonna shake this brush it look how wobbly that is it's fantastic let's do that over here too Pull that paint down. All right, I like that. I like that a lot. I'm gonna make this really dark over here. And then just some water. I'm gonna pull that down on the sides there. I don't want that to be stark white on the edges there. It's just a personal preference. Pull that, I'm gonna pull this up now. Just getting some different kinds of marks and movement there. Going back to make this really, really dark at the top. Really, really dark. I added that water, so it's gonna lighten it up a lot. So let's just go ahead and add in that really deep dark. We're doing dark blue today, guys. We are doing dark blue. <laughs> so pulling that in and up. Now this may create some bloom effects and that sort of thing. I'm totally okay with that. Get some lovely little marks. I'm flicking my brush. So I just wanna encourage you to have fun and play with your watercolors and just see what happens. I love this contrast we have going on over here. Okay, let's bring in, I think we wanna bring, I wanna bring in the cobalt, which is really lovely and light and I'm actually mixing it a little bit with that end and throw in there it's going to create some interesting color it's still blue it's just brighter end and throw does have a little bit of a grayness to it not a lot but a little splatter this on Ooh, big surprise I'm splattering see this color mixed in it's just gorgeous just Gorgeous. And this brush is great for splattering because it's so flexible and you can create some lines with it. If you tap harder, you create some interesting lines. I'm always saying play with your paint. Play, play, play because you'll have so much fun and you'll create some amazing art that way as well. I like how this has this mix in there. I think that's really cool looking. And let me get just a light mix of this and put some over there. There we go. Okay. 
Now I'm bringing in the metallic. I'm just sticking with the same brush. I'm going to bring in this red gold metallic. It will contrast more than say the champagne. So I'm gonna just swipe it in. Make some little marks. Now I'm going to splatter with it. Just pull up a little there. So I'm just creating some interesting texture and you know, this could be like a, a magical forest. This could just be completely, totally abstract, which is really what I'm going for. I'm gonna pull this down a little and let that kind of seep out. It's a little too much there. I like the contrast here, but too much there. And I'll bring in some more of that Indian Throne. Drag my brush on the side because it just creates interesting marks. Ooh, I like that. That's not as vertical. Swooping to the side there. So like I said, I'm just playing, having fun, experimenting, and see where it takes me. Let's bring in some dark at the bottom too. Maybe I'm getting a little carried away here, I don't know. But I just wanna bring that in a little. Maybe not quite as dark as the top, Now I'm almost creating like a vignette effect by adding this dark all around the edges. So it'll draw your eye into the painting. Now I'm just playing until I'm happy with the way this looks or I feel like I don't want to try and take it any further right now. Let me add more metallic. Let me add, actually before I add more metallic, I'm going to bring in a strong amount of the cobalt and just, just love that. I love how it shows up in that deep dark blue there. And even though it's a dark blue itself, that makes it look really bright. Okay, now a little bit of that. So I'm just doing a little of this and a little bit of that and working back and forth. And everything's still quite wet. I am working quite quickly. There's sort of a puddle here. I think I'll clean that up a little. Just touch the edge with the tissue. There we go, I don't want that. Because this paper is, is not fully cotton, I don't want it to have that much water. <laughs> it's gonna make it buckle more. Now I'm really just flinging that paint. I think I ended up here with it, an abstract forest. Get more of this metallic. This one is almost gone. I do have another set of this waiting in the wings, but I wanna make the most of what I have here. It does still have paint in it, right? There we go. Then I'm gonna do the same thing again, but stronger, stronger paint. And just flick that. You could do this with a rigger brush, this kind of stroke create interesting interesting effects and see this area is more dry so those marks are more defined really tiny marks over here so the bristles kind of separate on this brush which really makes it interesting 
<laughs> you know, I want to do that with the cobalt. I think that will look interesting too. Let me make a pretty thick mixture here and then. So that's going to contribute to that foresty look. I was going completely abstract and now I'm abstract forest. <laughs> you never know. You never know the direction things will take as you start painting if you let them. If you like more realistic, then you know, this may not be the way for you. Okay, I'm stopping there. I think it's interesting. It is extremely abstract. I'm, I'm, I lied. I want this to be darker. So I'm just picking up my other brush so I can bring in more paint just to darken that up. I'm using that same pulling motion, but it's just a little different effect because it's a different brush and adding in a deep, dark color on the edge. This is not super watery, is it? I don't want it to be. I'm gonna pull this up too dark there. I should go back to my maybe I should go back for the splatters to my loose goose dagger brush but I'll just do this I already have it loaded <laughs> all right I am actually stopping there now I may go back later Add some splatters or something but probably not probably not let me take the tape off of this for you and let's see how it looks with nice clean edges now we really get that contrast of of those edges there because that dark color now if you're doing this at you know trying this yourself I do recommend that you let the paint dry I'm not doing that but I recommend that you do do that. I'm going to keep the washi tape because it has these nice lines on it. So what I'll do is I can use it later. <clears throat> I'll just put it on this piece of paper I have to the side. So you can use this washi tape more than once, especially if you do art journaling. I like the way that one had lines. Oh, look. Yes. This is a lovely blue forest. <laughs> it's very abstract, right? But it has great contrast, has beautiful color. And yes, so have some playtime with your art. Relax, have fun, be in the moment. Let the painting take you wherever it wants to go. And, you know, don't worry about the outcome so much. This is kind of a crazy outcome. I like it, but it wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea, right? So just, I just really want to encourage you to explore and play and enjoy your art. All right, thanks so much for joining me for art exploration this month of September. All right, see you soon. Bye.